Hey, hey, it's hot. I hope it's not so hot where you are, but it's hot where I am. So I'm staying in this week in the cool. And uh, here we find ourselves again, Monday School, Smith and Helwes Formation Series Lesson Outline for June the 23rd, 2024. We continue with the life of Simon Peter, looking at Peter's restoration, John 21, 15 through 25. As always, my uh, lessons are brought to you by the Center for Christian Education. If you like what you hear, if it, this is helpful for you, please send me some comments, give me some emojis, whatever uh, you need to do. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Center for Christian Education. I would love it if you would subscribe and uh, have access to these as soon as they come out each week. So thanks for being here. Let's uh, begin to look at John 21. Two issues are at play this week. Jesus's forgiveness of Peter is the prime lesson point, but also the trustworthiness of this gospel is also in play. A trustworthy reporting in today's world is at an all-time low. The same would have been true for Jesus's day. Uh, the American media did not invent fake news. Neither did the Romans or the Pharisees or anyone else of Jesus' day. In the days of Jesus, oral transmission was the accepted way of receiving information. The, really the only way, the only trusted way, uh, while letters were sent back and forth, those letters were mostly circular letters. In other words, they were written to this person over here, but they would also apply to this person over here and this person over here. Or they would write to this church and the same letter would apply to this church and the same letter would apply to this church over here. And so oral tradition and transmission is how word got passed around. Or a letter with a seal on it or a letter with a statement of authenticity would also carry weight. Today, Americans believe that 62% of the news they consume on TV, newspapers, and radio is biased. 62%. That comes from a recent survey from the Knight Foundation and from a Gallup poll. One of the respondents' chief concerns about media was bias, and Americans are much more likely to perceive bias in the news today than they were a generation ago. Part of that is because media and news has become a commodity. A generation ago, news reporting was still viewed as a responsibility. While the media has a responsibility to fairly and truthfully represent the U.S. democracy and government, respondents in the survey believe that media as a whole is doing a poor job. Today's lesson is not for you to debate which media outlets you respect. This is a call to find trustworthy voices that represent truth. And, and that's going to be a hard look for most of us. And here is the truth. At least here is the truth for me. If you have a bias, you can find multiple voices across all media to support your bias. Test, test me on that. 
the challenge in teaching this lesson is to remind us all that we have to be very careful about how we accept truth and from whom we receive truth and to whom we share truth. There are many voices vying for our attention. Be careful who you listen to. One of my prayers is, Lord, remind me that all the truth I know is not all the truth. And John closes his gospel with uh, a reminder. At the end of verse 24, he says, uh, what we have written, we know to be true. But there are also many other things which Jesus did. Every one of them could have been written. I suppose that the world itself could not tain, could not contain the body that could be written. In other words, this testimony comes from John, and it is the truth as we perceive it, as we know it. And so some things that we read about in John's gospel, written from a definite bias towards the love of God, some of the things that John writes about might be slightly different when picked up by one of the other Gospels and might be totally different in some respects. And John covered some things that the other Gospels did not. Again, John is working from the leadership of the Holy Spirit within his own mind to give us testimony of Jesus. Now, having said all that, let's move on to Peter's restoration. Peter's expressions of love to Jesus were sincere and deeply felt. Too many of us tend to stay on the surface of relationships. Jesus's continued commission of Peter emphasizes Jesus's forgiveness, love, and trust of this friend. John was beloved by Jesus and worked to relay a trustworthy voice around the ministry of Jesus. And John begins and ends his gospel with Jesus. He shows us that his priority is Jesus and that this will serve all of us well. Jesus was the master of questions. Jesus knew that the way to the heart of the matter was not with surface declarations, but with in-depth thoughtfulness. Peter was reeling from his night of desperate denial. He needed some sign of forgiveness and restoration from his beloved friend, Jesus. And Jesus avoided giving Peter cheap grace. He refused to say, oh, that's okay, we'll just chalk that up and move on. Instead, Jesus asked a question three times. Peter, do you love me? That must have been excruciating for this man called the rock to be grilled by Jesus in this way. Yet, I believe that in the repetition of the question and the continued commissioning that Jesus was expressing both his love and his faith 
in Simon Peter. And I believe that Peter believed that as well. He would become one of the two greatest missionaries of the Christian faith. Some stories of faith meander and confuse us as to their meaning. John, however, begins and ends his gospel with Jesus. For John, Jesus is the North Star. That's a good example for us. Jesus gives us the direction of life. If life happens that is contrary to Jesus' teaching, we must carefully evaluate what's happening. If events in the world confound us, if the media misinterprets some of those events, we should go to Jesus. Can our faith answer every question we have about life today? I, I don't know the answer to that. But I do know that with prayer and discernment, Jesus will lead us to a deeper understanding of truth. And discerning this truth just might set us free. It worked for Simon Peter. It worked for John. And hopefully it works for us. And in today's world, that's good news. Good news indeed. So ask your class, how do they evaluate sources of information in today's world. Ask, have you ever been led astray by some of those sources? And what were the consequences? What is the uh, standard now by which you judge reasonable and truthful reporting in the media? Many people used to get their trusted information from a local newspaper. Your local newspaper may have gone out of business by now. Others used to get trusted news from one of the three big media services, CBS, NBC, ABC. They have scattered in many different directions, though their evening national broadcasts are still there. What is a metric that has to be in place for you to believe a reporter's story at this point? Many just want to receive fluff and not dig deeper. As I have said over the last few years, I get my news these days from ESPN. And then ESPN started carrying bits of the news. So now I get my news from HGTV. I say that half jokingly, but remember, all jokes have a thread of serious Ness in them. Uh, I just hardly can watch TV news anymore. I spend time with trusted sources on the internet, and sometimes even those have let me down. That's a big deal. It's a big deal in today's world how we interpret information, not only information about current events, information about this book. Uh, my mother-in-law watches four different preachers every Sunday. I, I'm not one of them. She watches four different preachers 
talk about this book and and sometimes two different sermons on the same story or same passage and and often those preachers have differing responses who we listen to how we receive it and what we do with it that's a big deal in our world today and i can't emphasize that enough what about during the pandemic who did you listen to what about now who do you listen to john says what i have written what i have written is true as i know it is true as i know it john doesn't say this is the ultimate truth he only says, this is true as I know it. Peter, do you love me? John was standing by the campfire when that question was asked and answered. Lord, you know I love you. Then, then Peter, feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Then tend my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Do you really love me? Yes, Lord, more than anything, you know I love you. Then, Peter, feed my sheep. It was a call and response. It was a call and a response and then a commission. And if you look at that, breaking it down set by set, the same question is asked every time and the same response every time and then a little bit different commission each time. But I think in the repetition of those, Jesus is saying, get on with it, Peter. I forgive you. Those hard moments in the courtyard are forgotten as far as the east to the west. Now, get on with it. And then as that comes to a close, Peter turns and sees the disciple whom Jesus loved at a distance. And he said, Lord, what about him? And points at John. And Jesus says, who is he to you? What is that to you? In other words, Peter, worry about Peter. We, we get caught up in so many things. We get caught up in so many things. Is this right? Is this acceptable? Is this true? Is this good? And those questions bombard us over and over and over again. And Jesus was the master of questions. And Jesus asked us as he asked Simon Peter, do you love me? That's really, that's really the only question, don't you think? That's really at least the central question. Prosser, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Then quit watching Netflix and feed my sheep. Wait a minute now, Lord, I, I don't know about that. Prosser, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Then quit watching the Atlanta Braves baseball team so much and feed my sheep. Wait a minute. Lord, do you know what you're asking, Prosser? Do you love me? Yes. Yes, Lord, I love you. Then feed my sheep. Jesus continues to drill down until 
our excuses are exhausted and all we have left is obedience. That's what I like about Jesus. That's what I love about Jesus. Rarely is there condemnation. More often than not, there is love and acceptance. And we see that here. A man upon which Jesus has said, I'm going to build my church on this kind of man, on, on that man, I will build my church. And yet, Peter lied, fell short of the glory of God. Have you ever lied? Have I ever lied? Prosser, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And that's that's really all there is. And that's really all we need. If we love the Lord, then love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. It it really is that simple and that complex. So how do we judge trustworthiness? By knowing scripture enough, by praying enough, by paying attention to our own mind and conscious enough that if something we hear makes us uncomfortable research it and find out whether we are being confronted by the truth or or whether we might be wrestling with an untruth and also for me my north star is Jesus. If Jesus talked about it, if Jesus responded to it, if there's anything within these Bible books that quote the Lord, those are the words that I want to hang on to, and those are my measuring stick by which everything else gets focused. Is God's revelation finished? I don't think so. God is revealing to us every day. But when there is a question, I go back to the words of Jesus. Follow me. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And that is my prayer for us this day through Jesus the Christ. Let's pray together. God, thank you for a brain that can think, for a brain that is not led astray by strong, arrogant words or half-truths of a kind or another but a brain that allows me to think and to research and to refine what I'm hearing and what I think about it. And thank you, God, for your word and for the testimony of truth that comes from so many of your disciples. But thank you especially for Jesus the Christ, the Lamb of God, Help us, help us to hear those words and to live by them deeply, consistently because of our love for you. All of this in Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Thank you, folks. As always, emojis are welcome. Subscriptions to our YouTube channel are welcome, but most of all, 
being able to sit here with you and visit for a few minutes each week. Uh, one of my favorite things. Have fun with this lesson. I think you can have fun with this lesson. And uh, I think there is a deep truth that will emerge here in not only the restoration of Simon Peter, but in each of our restorations in, that have resulted in our relationship with Jesus. Thanks so much. Bo and the Beard, the Center for Christian Education, Monday School. Have a great week. I'll see you next week.